Good morning, everybody, uh, and thank you for joining us for our special child support information for active duty and veteran members of the U.S. Armed Forces. Um, I'm, my name is Chuck Delaney. With me is Izzy Laureano. Joanne Schneider will be joining us a little later. And here's the team. Uh, Eileen and Robert are not with us today. They're handling other assignments. Um, Izzy and I are going to be making the presentation. Joanne will be keeping an eye on things. Okay, a few definitions so that everybody has the basic uh, uh, concepts in uh, place. The CP is the custodial parent. That's the parent uh, with whom the child or children on the case live the majority of the time. The non-custodial parent is the other parent of the child or children, and that is the individual who pays child support. Current support is the amount an NCP is required to pay regularly. That's based on uh, a child support order, which is issued in family court by a support magistrate. Family court is unusual because there are different parts of family court so that the support magistrate only deals with child support issues. Uh, the support magistrate does not deal with issues of custody or removal of a child from the home. Those are handled in other parts of family court. Current support might be $150 every two weeks. Arrears are child support debt that has been not paid in a timely fashion. And arrears and debt are an issue for many people in the child support system. And we're going to talk a little bit more about that. DSS is the Department of Social Services of New York City. That's the parent agency over HRA and OCSS, the Office of Child Support Services. Cash assistance are benefits, and when cash assistance or other benefits, such as Medicaid, are being um, supplied to um, uh, the custodial parent, for that period of time, the benefits, uh, I'm sorry, the current support that's being paid goes to DSS to reimburse for the benefits that are being paid to the uh, child and the custodial parent. However, there is a pass-through. So if the NCP is making regular payments, DSS will pass through part of that payment in addition to the regular budget that the custodial parent and child or children are receiving. OCSS has what's basically a mission sta statement. And that is that we put children first, we help both parents support their children. And if you think about it, whether a child is born in the midst of a long marriage or a long relationship, or uh, because of a brief romance, uh, however a child is brought into the world, both of the individuals who are responsible for that child's birth should take a part in supporting that child and looking after their well-being. We do this by locating non-custodial parents when necessary and establishing parentage. Without parentage, um, there is no uh, child support order. Parentage must be established, used to be called paternity. Parentage is a more inclusive term. Establish child and medical support orders. Every child support order includes uh, a provision for medical support. Either the child is on the health insurance of one parent or the other parent. If neither parent has uh, medical uh, insurance, then the custodial parent is usually ordered to enroll the child in a program such as Child Health Plus. We then disperse, monitor, and when necessary, enforce orders. And we have a long relationship. If a child starts child support when they're two years old, that child is, and we're likely to have the CP, NCP, and the child with us for 19 years until the child reaches the age of emancipation in New York State, which is 21. 
We also have uh, programs designed to help NCPs find employment and avoid and manage debt. As I mentioned earlier, debt is a big issue in child support. Now, I also want to point out that child support, first off, it's complicated. Uh, Izzy and I are both parents. We know that raising a child is difficult and challenging under any circumstances. Uh, child support adds a layer of complexity to that. And child support is governed by federal provisions. Child support is federally mandated. It's state supervised and it's locally administered. So if you are involved in a child support case and that case is uh, located in New York City, the five boroughs, then New York City's uh, OCSS, that's us, will be the ones who will be uh, administering the case. This is important to let people know because uh, some of the programs that we're going to talk about this morning are only uh, available in the uh, five boroughs. If your case is based here, then everything we're going to talk about this morning uh, applies to you. I know that uh, veterans tend to move around quite a bit. So there may be an instance where the case is located elsewhere in New York State somewhere else in the country. Uh, and we're going to talk a little bit about that later on. Okay, the basic benefits of child support. First off, legal parentage is established. And that's important, particularly in the case of veterans, where there may be veterans benefits that will flow to the child once parentage is established. Regular payments are made based on the NCP's income. And the intention of child support is to make sure that the payments an NCP is expected to make reflect who the NCP is at the current time. As I mentioned earlier, a child support case could last 19 years if the child, uh, if this case begins when the child is two years old. So during that period of time, the NCP's income may go up, it may go down, other things could happen. The NCP could be injured and be receiving um, uh, uh, unemployment, but not unemployment, but uh, medical benefits for a period of time. Um, one could lose one's job, hours could be cut. So it's important to bear in mind that it may be necessary for the NCP to apply to have the order modified. Child support also provides formal documentation of financial support. This avoids issues where the uh, there are disputes. You didn't pay last month. Yes, I did. No, you didn't. Yes, I did. Prove it. Well, I gave you cash. I can't prove it. Um, all child support payments are documented by OCSS and we can su supply account statements if need be. Also, collections are enforced and we'll talk a little bit about that. There are both uh, administrative enforcement actions that kick in automatically along with judicial enforcement actions when necessary. It also guarantees, as I said earlier, the cost of raising a child is shared by both parents. Now, uh, we know from studies over the years that child support is an important anti-poverty program for low-income NCPs and that it improves outcomes for families. It provides financial stability for the custodial parent it makes sure there's uh, medical and child care support if necessary. We do the record keeping. Uh, the NCP has a voice in the child's future, is more likely to engage with the child and more likely to find and keep employment. Studies also show that children receiving child support are more likely to complete school, exhibit increased 
self-control, and improvements on other social indicators. As I said, it's an important anti-poverty program, and uh, it means we help children receive the support they need. We do our best to work with parents to reduce financial stress with the goal of breaking the cycle of poverty across two generations. Okay, now some special concerns relative to veterans. We know that some veterans may have high child support debt. Uh, we know that child support debt can contribute to barriers for veterans to securing housing and employment. And we know that homeless veterans, and unfortunately there are too many of them, are often transient and less likely to live in the state where a child support case was initiated. Now, there are some special protections for military, particularly active duty military. The Service Members Civil Relief Act, SCRA, is a federal law that protects uniformed service members. Service members can have protection from default orders and can pause proceedings and garnishments, primarily for active duty service members or veterans upon return from active duty. Now, we don't know all the uh, numbers of um, people who are uh, of people who are on child support cases in New York City uh, that are veterans unless we have that information. We known veterans represent approximately 3% of New York City's caseload. There are 6,357 child support cases in New York City. Three quarters of those, a little over three quarters, are NCPs and a little under one quarter uh, are custodial parents. And we know that $314 is the average monthly obligation amount for NCPs, $314. And $31,260 is the average amount veterans have paid in child support over the life of the case. Now, uh, enforcement for military, and remember, child support enforcement can include things such as suspending a driver license, freezing and taking funds from bank accounts, uh, gar gar uh, withholding standard procedures to withhold from uh, salary. We can also uh, suspend different kinds of professional licenses. We can also uh, collect uh, lotto winnings uh, and, uh, and collect tax refunds from both state and federal. Subject to income withholding, which is removed automatically, is military active duty pay, military pensions and retirement pay, and VA benefits. Not subject to income withholding is basic allowance for housing and subsistence, subsistence known as BA and BAS, um, veteran assistance for low-income individuals, and veteran disability pensions are not usually garnished for child support. Apportionment. What is apportionment? Under certain circumstances, the Veterans Administration will send a portion of a veteran's benefit to a dependent without a court order. Who can ask for an apportionment? A minor child, an estranged spouse, 
or a dependent parent. These are all procedures that happen through the Veterans Administration, not through child support. Now, I mentioned we have a long relationship with our clients, uh, and the life cycle is a case is opened either in the borough office if the parent, uh, if the custodial parent and the child are receiving benefits, or in our family court support services office if a uh, if if the child is not receiving benefits. As I mentioned earlier, we have to establish parentage. Then once a parentage is established, uh, we are able to seek an order at family court in front of a support magistrate. We then go about the business of collecting and distributing that support. And when necessary, again, as I mentioned earlier, enforcing or modifying the order, which can happen multiple times. The two places where problems crop up are in establishing orders and failure to modify orders. For example, if an NCP becomes incarcerated, we do not automatically know that. Um, if the NCP notifies us, we can create a downward modification to reflect that. So it's important for people to stay in touch with us, uh, update us if they move so we know where they're located and let us know their employment status. By the way, uh, we're going to send everyone who attends today a copy of this presentation so that um, if there's anything that's not clear or that you want to review, you'll be able to do that. We will send you both a copy of the presentation along with some other uh, helpful information. Now, the amount of the child support basically is 17% for one child, 25% for two children, 29% if there are three children, 31% for four, and at least 35 for five or more children. These percentages are established uh, by a New York state law called the Child Support Standards Act. And there is um, some leeway, particularly in high income situations where the NCP uh, income is uh, in the $170,000 per year range where the support magistrate has more latitude. And 21 is the age of emancipation. Okay, let's take a look at those enforcement actions. So as far as the enforcement actions, we do have several enforcement actions. There's what's called administrative enforcement actions. And these are the ones that most people are uh, accustomed to. Um, created agency, driver's license suspension, tax refund, um, bank account seizures and lottery. Um, prizes as well. Um, however, there's also what's called judicial enforcement actions, and these are actions that are required by the court to handle. So they need to be petitioned to the court for a money judgment. You could also be assigned for different types of work programs. So in, in other words, if you're un, not working and you go to court and they, they assign you to go to a work program, which will help you get work, a professional license suspension, we're talking about those licenses like a doctor's license or a lawyer's license. Um, usually those are used for cases where the NCP is willfully not making um, payment and they're trying to find ways around that. Um, obviously, arrest warrant and probation and incarceration. In New York State, we actually do the least amount of incarcerations as a result of not paying child support, we usually identify as there is a circumstances that are in play to uh, prevent that. But incarceration is the last and final option if someone is, like I said before, willfully not wanting to pay child support. And we'll talk a little bit more about that. And I see um, I've been looking through the chat um, through this whole time. We are going to address 
most of your comments in the chat and we're gonna we'll talk about that at the end of this presentation i know there's a lot of people saying a lot of things and i don't want it to be that we're ignoring you we're not ignoring you instead we are we're going to do the presentation and we're going to answer questions and comments towards the end okay challenging and enforcement action um due process required that the ncp has the right to challenge all enforcement actions um, whether it's a mistake of fact or the NCP is exempt from action or mistaken identity. Um, those are some reasons for reasons why we would challenge an enforcement action. Um, steps to challenge each action are listed on the notice that's being sent to the NCP. And there are different time frames that are associated, roughly from 10 to 45 days, depending on the action. OCSS will review the case and determine the challenge should be upheld or denied. And notice will be sent to the NCP reflecting OCSS decision. Now, because of that, we also want to make sure that you're aware of the times that we need to establish or modify an order and there's different pathways that we're utilizing now. All right, when establishing or modifying an order, there's two paths which can be taken. One is the traditional court process, or the second is the agreement process that's facilitated by OCSS. In both cases, amount of the child support paid will be the same because the Child Support Standards Act will be in control of the obligation amount. Agreements are an alternative to the traditional court approach that simplifies the process and gives both parents a voice in prior to the court appearance. As far as the process for non-custodial parents is as follows. The NCP receives a summons package in the mail. For cash assistance cases, the NCP is served and issues summons by mail. If the NCP does not appear, the sheriff will serve the personal summons. For non-CA cases, the CP is responsible for serving the summons. Next, the NCP and the CP attend the hearing in family court. If the NCP does not appear, the shares will serve the summons. It is important to note that the NCP needs to bring financial documentation to court so that the support amount can be established based on what is provided. Three, the NCP might return to court one or more times if necessary to complete documentation or to establish parentage. The NCP then receives the child support order once it is established. Um, just to make sure there is a thing called default orders. If the NCP does not appear in court, then a default order can be established without input from the NCP. If employed, the NCP typically begins to have their child support automatically deducted from their paychecks. No Payments usually take about two to three pay cycles. So the NCP will be required to make payments themselves before then to avoid any accrued debt. And one of the things I want to take note of is that um, because of, since the pandemic, we have had a delay in the court proceedings. So it actually might take a little longer than the norm. Just want to keep that in mind. Challenges with the court process. However, because challenges with court processes, parents are at times reluctant to engage in it. There are uncertainties in the court and the process can seem confusing to some. In addition, court cases can often require multiple visits and difficulty in travel and time loss from work or away from children can be an additional burden for parents. Because of this, OCSS develop an alternative to court processes by reaching an agreement outside of court. It gives the parents more time to understand the process. It leads to less conflict and more consistent payments and ultimately improve long-term outcomes for children. And I mentioned this before, this is what we call the agreement process. And here how it works. During an initial phone interview, OCSS will offer the parents an opportunity to enter into an agreement voluntarily. If the child is receiving a benefit, such as cash assistance, the non-custodial parent can fill out the paperwork directly with OCSS. The custodial parent's consent is not necessary. If the child is not receiving a benefit, both parents will meet with OCSS staff to fill out and sign an agreement based on the parent's income. The meeting can be conducted by phone or in person, and the parents can meet with OCSS together or separately. Two, 
the agreement is sent to the court and a hearing is scheduled. Three, both parents appear in court knowing in advance what the likely outcome will be, making it less stressful experience. And finally, the agreement is reviewed and then converted into an order in usually one abbreviated hearing. So what are the benefits? Well, the benefits are it shortens the time spent in court, it aligns orders with the NCP's income, it gives the parents the opportunity to ask questions, it's a more supportive process, it allows for more open discussions between parents, it decreases orders made on default. Ultimately, agreements allow the parties to go to court knowing that it will likely the likely outcome will be making it less a stressful experience. Right. Finally, with as far as agreements go to apply, there's two methods. You could either email us at the email that you see in the screen and make sure you put that subject line agreement. Or you could visit our customer service center in Lower Manhattan in 151 West Broadway on the fourth floor. Their doors are open from Mondays through Friday, 8 a.m. to 6 p.m., excluding holidays. All right. Now, the importance of the you know, NCP participation is really the, the, the big challenge. Um, participating will provide protections from day one. If the NCP participates, it aligns the child support order with their income. There are protections in place for those that fall below the federal poverty level, as protections are in place if you are falling below the SSR. And there is a percentage of income if you are above the SSR. This is where we said the Support Standards Act. Ideally, NTP pays on time and in full, leading to better children outcome. As far as those protections go for low-income NTPs, if you are below, below the federal poverty level, you could receive $25 a, a month or less in child support orders, and your arrears will be capped at $500. For minimal orders, these are orders that are earning at or below the New York State Self Reserve. It's about $50 a month. And if you're earning above the New York State Self Support, it's a support fixed by the Child Support Standards Act. Now, either party can file a petition in court to modify an upward or downward modification. Um, there are reasons why you would do it. Circumstances for modifications include new or higher paying jobs or raise an existing position, job loss or a decrease in income. Obviously, we mentioned incarceration, sudden disability, which includes temporary or permanent, as well as a change in custody. Um, as we mentioned earlier, there are uh, some issues that uh, crop up with veterans who move around the country, it could also be their families, so that there are rules to determine what state can modify an order. If any of the parents, CP, if any of the parties, excuse me, CP, NCP, or the child um, still live in the state that issued the order, only the state that issued the order can modify the order. If none of the parties still live in the state that issued the order, the state that issued the order no longer has jurisdiction and cannot modify the order. So a child support case started in Oklahoma, uh, and but now neither the NCP, CP, or the child live in Oklahoma. Oklahoma no longer has jurisdiction. If none of the parties still live in the state that issued the order, and all of them now live in the same state, the party's new state of residence can assume jurisdiction and modify the order. If none of the parties still live in the state that issued the order, and all of them now live in different states from one another, the parents seeking modification must register the controlling order and petition to modify the order in the other parent's state. You can see this can get confusing. The average amount of child support debt for veteran 
NCPs is $19,848. Child support debt, we know, can be a barrier to paying current child support obligation and a barrier to NCPs engaging with their children. Now, in New York City, and I want to stress, this is in New York City, for New York City cases, we have a variety of debt reduction programs. For money that's owed to DSS, there are four key programs, arrears cap, arrears credit, pay it off, and parent success program. You can learn more about these at nyc.gov slash OCSS debt reduction. Now, when we send you the copy of the presentation, all the things that are under that are in blue and underlined, like this link, will be clickable. So you don't have to write this down. You'll get the presentation either tomorrow or Thursday at the latest. And you can just go to this slide, click on that link, and it will take you to the information involved uh, with each of these programs. Now, we can forgive money that's owed to DSS because technically it's owed to us. Can we forgive money that's owed to the custodial parent? Can we say to Mr. Smith, you know what, you don't, you know, you owe Ms. Jones $40,000, but we're going to forgive $35,000 of it. No, because it's owed to Ms. Jones. We don't have the authority to do that. Now, here are the programs that I mentioned. Arrears cap, caps arrears at $500, provided it's money that's owed to DSS during the period an NCP earns at or below the federal poverty level that Izzy talked about a little earlier. Arrears credit provides a $5,000 annual credit when child support is paid for a full year. And this can be repeated for three years for a maximum credit of $15,000, again, of child support owed to DSS. <clears throat> Pay it off is a limited time arrears payment matching program. So if the NCP makes a payment of $500 or more toward child support debt owed to DSS, the payment will be matched. This happens usually once a year. It's already been held in 2024, but we will be holding uh, a pay it off program. But we're just waiting for final approval from the state of New York because child support is state supervised. Uh, and that uh, pay it off period will be in early March of 2025. The Parent Success Program is designed to support a non-custodial's well-being, and up to $10,000 in debt can be eliminated after completing an approved substance, uh, substance use treatment program. And these programs work. Take a look at these numbers. Arrears cap has reduced $284 million worth of debt over 14 years, helping over 13,000 non-custodial parents. The arrears credit program has reduced 87 million uh, over a little shorter period, helping over 5,000 non-custodial parents. And pay it off has reduced 19 million um, uh, in 10 years, helping over 4,000 NCPs. And remember, these are New York City programs that involve debt reduction for debt that is owed to the New York City Department of Social Services. Next slide. Now, to apply for debt reduction, here's the link. Um, and or you can send an email to us. Uh, at the email address below, which I apologize for it being as complicated as, as it is, dcse.cseweb at dfa.state.ny.us. Try saying that five times fast. Put in the subject line debt reduction. 
include in the email your case ID, name, and date of birth. You can also visit our customer service center uh, in Lower Manhattan at 151 West Broadway, fourth floor, New York, New York, 10013, Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. to 6 p.m., except holidays. And we can help you with all the debt reduction programs and also review your case to see if there's anything else that would be helpful. For debt that's owed to the custodial parent, our only uh, option is mediation services that can address child support debt owed to custodial parents. Mediators help parents come to agreements about past due child support payments, future child support payments, custody, visitation, communication, and other types of conflicts. Now, we know that in some instances, the relation between the custodial parent and the non-custodial parent is so toxic that the likelihood of something like mediation working is extremely limited. However, we also know that there are certain times that there are minor level or lower level conflicts that add to the toxicity and some of those conflicts can be reduced through mediation. I don't like it because my ex calls me late at night. Uh, I'm asleep. I have to get up and go to work. I would prefer he or she only communicate with me by email or by calling me before six o'clock. Oh, I didn't realize that. I can do that. Uh, sometimes mediation can help reduce the tension level to an area that will make things workable. Mediation, to apply for mediation, um, you can send us an email at that same um, uh, email address that goes to our customer service folks. Put mediation in the subject line, include the same basic information, or you can come um, visit us at our customer service center and we'll be happy to work with you. Or you can click, or you can click, you can click the link above uh, and reach out to the service providers directly, along with the presentation that we're going to send you this week. We will also send the information uh, about mediation and the approved service providers. Okay, uh, improved communication. We've done a lot to try to um, reach out to our clients, our CPs and NCPs uh, through seminars like uh, this webinar, through YouTube, through improved website, our improved website and appointments by phone. Uh, it used to be you had to come to our customer service center. Now we have uh, the option for everyone to receive phone appointments. The Access child, HRA Child Support mobile app. Okay, uh, I'm sorry, I'm back. <laughs> All right, you can continue. Uh, the Access HRA Child Support mobile app, this has been around for a couple of years. It's proving to be very popular. It allows cust custodial parents that are receiving benefits to apply for child support using their phone. Uh, both parties, the NCP and the CP, can submit forms and affidavits. The NCP can make an online credit, debit, PayPal, or Venmo payment uh, with no fee. And this is pretty significant because a lot of uh, services that uh, handle child support payments with credit and debit cards charge like a $3 fee. If your order is uh, $100 a week, that's 52 uh, payments times $3. That's over $150. But if you do it on our mobile app, uh, it's at no with no fee. You can also apply for agreements and debt reduction using the Child Support mobile app. Uh, you can access it uh, through the 
uh, QR code that you see on the screen, or it's in both uh, the Apple App Store and Google Play. Now, uh, as I think uh, Alan Farrell put in chat earlier, we have a special case review for members of the armed forces. Uh, and this is going to be uh, specifically next month, Tuesday, November 19th, and Wednesday, November 20th. Uh, you can meet with a customer service representative by phone to review your child support case and ask questions, uh, or you can schedule an appointment by emailing uh, DCSE at that long address uh, and provide your case ID, name, and date of birth. And again, those special sessions, and we'll send you a flyer about it, will be uh, on Tuesday, November 19th, and Wednesday, November 20th, when we will pr prioritize our services for uh, our vets. Now, the Department of Veterans Services is a New York City agency that connects veteran connects to veteran services such as housing, education, and helping veterans uh, navigate benefits in New York City. Uh, and they have uh, a lot of services available. And I encourage you, if you're a vet and you have not reached out to them previously, to do so. And there are a host of other veterans resources uh, that are available uh, for uh, veterans. Uh, the VA, the U.S. Department of Veterans Affairs, and all these orange links that you see will be clickable on the, um, the uh, presentation that we're going to send you. AMVETS, American Veterans, Office of Mental Health, the Veteran Advocacy Project, Veterans Employment and Training Services, and the United War Veterans Council. So uh, we encourage you to reach out and take advantage of resources when and where you can. Okay, now also one of our partners is a great nonprofit called Family Legal Care. Uh, and they have a helpline that gives family law information by phone, live chat, and email. They can be reached <clears throat> at 212-343-1122 or familylegalcare.org. Uh, legal consultations provide an att attorney via video chat or phone for family law help. And if you don't have uh, access to a tech hub, uh, it also provides computers and internet. Uh, and there's a number to, and there, I believe the tech hubs are now in three boroughs um, and we can uh, put you in touch with them uh, or you can get in touch with Family Legal Care and find out where you can go to take advantage of those hubs. All right. So as far as resources, we do have plenty of resources. All the resources you see here when you do receive the PDF copy, um, these will be hyperlinks that you will have access to, to websites, videos, resources, as well as contact information. Please also take note that the New York State Child Support Helpline number that's there, it is the state line and it's to be utilized for you know generic questions, general questions. However, they may not be privy to New York City um, programs. So we suggest that you email us and we'd be able to respond to you better. Of course, we have links to the mobile app as well as access to the website. With that said, we have come to the end of the presentation portion of today's session. Um, we thank you for your time and we ask you for your feedback for the presentation.